good evening everyone uh, today is the 11th session of our lecture series on uh, structural design of uh, lightweight hybrid multi-story construction and uh, i would I'd like to invite uh, vice president uh, engineer mrs kamala gunawardena to, to do the welcome over to you man. yeah thank you engineer banduka uh, good evening everyone uh, good evening good professor evening. Good evening. It's, uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this lecture again, especially for today's lecture. That's the, I think, 11th lecture. Uh, lightweight hybrid multi-story construction one. Right. So I think uh, as uh, let me welcome our esteemed professor, Tishan Jai Singh, huh? professor, uh, senior professor, Department of Civil yeah. Engineering, University of Morotua. Yeah your continuous uh, dedicated lecture series and appreciate a lot. Uh, with that, uh, actually, you, you will be taking, you will be taking our participants to a new way. I think it's a, it would, it would be a, some sort of a great experience to the members, participants. Actually, you will be talking, talking according to your abstract, newly de <clears throat> developed construction technology. We are the, uh, you, evolution can be dated back to mid 1940s so definitely it will be a very interesting one and uh, with that with that excitement i think uh, we'll start the thing and i will come our participants to the lecture and uh, i think uh, with this uh, expecting more contributions and uh, to go ahead with the same lecture series uh, i invite professor Jai Singh, Professor Sishan Jai Singh to take over the platform. Yeah. Thank you, okay. Professor. Thank, thank you, you Bandi. Thank you very much, Engineer Kamala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, now, uh, we started by looking at the basic materials that we use. And also, we looked at how the Euro code can be used for design of beams and the moment we know how to design a beam designing a slab is not a major problem because uh, the same rules are applicable so what i thought was i will introduce uh, this new concept as well so that uh, you know when we think about the vertical load transfer we can have many systems so generally in a building where the vertical load transfer is by the columns. But uh, in this new technology, we are planning to make use of walls as well. So what I thought was uh, before we uh, go deep into the design of columns, bases, foundations, I thought of uh, introducing this new technology that we developed as a result of about 40 years of 40 to 50 years of research at uh, University of Moratua. The main feature of this particular technology is it can give rise to about 50% cost saving in the inner building. And uh, the good news is uh, from 22nd. 23rd, 24th, that is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we are going to have Architect 2024 exhibition and uh, we are actually uh, having a 30 feet by 30 feet space called Affordable Luxury where we are going to show, showcase many new technologies. So if you are keen, please visit the exhibition and experience the, uh, get a first-hand experience of these new technologies. So if I repeat, it is on uh, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, Architect 2024 exhibition. We are going to have a, a special construction cluster called affordable luxury. So the idea is, you know, you can have luxury, but at a 
very low cost. So uh, you can learn firsthand about more details about this particular technology. So uh, now if you look at uh, the way that the construction industry in Sri Lanka has evolved, first we look at uh, you know, what happened in 2018 and what was what remained in uh, what was the situation that remained in 2020 so, so we just do a small comparison so that you know we can get some deep idea about what actually happened so 2018 What is the price of this? What is the US dollar? Used to be something like 165, 62, 170 rupees. We just lose a range. Now we take 23, 24 values, US dollar has uh, now come down to 310 to 320. But still, uh, you can see it's nearly double, double in rupee terms. Then we can also look at price of diesel. Diesel. And uh, so used to be around 120, 130 rupees per liter. Now it is 300 to 350 rupees per liter. It varies all the time. And then let's look at electricity. We used to have a unit maybe about 10 to 15 rupees. Today is about 50 to 90 rupees per unit. So you can see very significant variations in costs. And with that, what could happen? Let's see what could happen. So if you look at the basic ingredients that we use, the cement, sand, Aggregates, concrete, and many other materials, and steel. Cement used to be around 800 rupees. Now, today it's around 2200. Now, if you look at sand, good quality river sand, today costs per cube about 22,000 rupees. Manufactured sand can be slightly lower. It used to be around 14,000. Aggregate cost would have been about 8,000. Today, it goes around 12,000. One meter cube of concrete. Today, with placing, labor, everything can cost between 40,000 to 50,000. And used to be in the range of 22 to 25 to 30,000. Now let's look at steel. Per ton price used to be about 120,000. Today it has gone up to, I'm talking with the VAT, with VAT prices, something close to 350,000. But that is what we buy. But if you consider with the fixing charges, this used to be around 200,000. 
So today it is close to 450,000, 500,000 after allowing for wastage. Now if you look at all these figures, if you look at steel, we can see clearly about 250% figures. And cement, these prices would have been 150% increase. So we can clearly see where we our future should be. Our future should be structures that need less steel. So now we have to see whether Eurocode allows it. On what basis that we go for this particular uh, concept. So for that, what I thought was, let's look at a past event where the whole world had similar problems. And that is 1945. End of Second World War. World War. Russia was devastated. Germany almost completely destroyed. Europe needed a lot of renovations and rehabilitations. And England needed a lot of new buildings. But huge amount of resources have been used for the Second World War. So there were shortages. Steel, cement, and many other ingredients. Banduka, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. We can clearly hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we had a lot of uh, shortages. Right. And so, for example, we all know one good, one very well known engineer, Dr. A.C. Vishalingo. In 1950s, he went to Tokyo University. Tokyo University is the biggest in Japan as an undergraduate with a with a scholarship. And recently he published a book recalling his memories. And in that one he has mentioned all Tokyo University had one car. All university had only one car. We know Japan is a country full of cars, but those times, those days they had only one. Similarly, many other countries faced Severe steel shortage. And those days, labor was material very expensive. Labor very cheap. People are looking for jobs. And they were willing to work for low wages. And uh, have simple lives. So those days, if you look at CP110, then BS8110, both codes support something called rib slabs. Something like that. So the idea is we cast a slab to a thickness of 75 millimeters and these can be about 2 meters, 2.5 meters and the whole idea is this rib will be 
strong enough to span one way and ensure the deflection delta is pretty low. So that's the idea. Now if you look at this idea, how does it come? It comes from the behavior of a slab. Let's take an example. Because we know steel has ferrous, around it will be a ferrous oxide layer and there can be various forms, Fe2, O3, there are so many different varieties, but so let's just say it's an oxide layer and cement has tricalcium silicate plus water, calcium silicate gel plus calcium hydroxide. This creates a lot of calcium hydroxide here. So if you look at concrete, its pH value is around 12 to 13. And this ferrous oxide layer is very stable when pH is high. So we have a stable environment and provided that we introduce a cover of 25 millimeters or more, then we can have a structure that is going to definitely last 50 to 100 years, provided that we have cured concrete at least one week. Your curing of concrete will continue this reaction. And continued reaction means a lot of calcium hydroxide in concrete. And pH will be high, dense concrete. So curing is very important. So if we cure concrete, then the whole purpose of this track control, contract concrete, is to protect steel. Protect steel. And this, when we say cracked, we are talking about the surface crack width of surface crack with the point 0.3 millimeters. But it rapidly diminishes in width and by the time it reaches the reinforcement, it's negligible. So that's the kind of crack that is allowed. And uh, so generally, we can't see any of these cracks. So they are so fine, we can't see them. So, now, then people thought, why are we having all this concrete? Cannot we remove all this concrete? All this concrete. All this concrete. But they found deflection is a big problem. Deflection is high when H, the thickness is low. So they could not do it. Then they thought, can't we have ribs, beams, and make the slabs thin, as thin as possible? And when you make the slabs as thin as possible, span in this way, short distance, and having ribs around 
2 meter intervals what would happen we can minimize minimize the amount of concrete steel at the expense of more shattering false work may not vary because false work is something that we need less because the our weight is less but Literally, we definitely need more shattering, more, more labor for shattering. So, after Second World War, material, short supply, labor, cheap. So, this idea of minimizing work well because materials are expensive and short supply. More shattering was not a big problem because the saving from material would be much more than the extra work needed for shuttle. Then what happened? So this was nine, after Second World War. It needed two, three years to recover. And the recovery came in early 1950s. And in early 1950s, there was another special incident that is uh, relevant to today. And uh, China was declared as a republic 1949. And then Americans got involved in a war with China through Korea. And it was a very damaging war until 1953. 350,000 Chinese died, 400,000. Americans and Koreans died and finally the war ended having a ceasefire. They did not have an agreement, what they had was just a ceasefire. They said okay, no more fighting. But during this time, China did not have much industry, but this war helped China to emerge, to improve their steel production. Go help China to improve their steel production. And they also want a lot of rubber. So, and they, they were producing a lot of, they had a lot of farmers, so they were producing a lot of rice as well. So they wanted rubber, they had a lot of rice, so Sri Lanka started supplying rubber to China. China supplied rice to Sri Lanka. So that is what we celebrated as 70 years of rubber rice uh, agreement uh, last year. So, with all these developments, by 1960s, by 1960, Japan was also has uh, was doing reasonably well, and they were also having a big middle class. And gradually, middle class means wages rise, and more production means material reduces. So, gradually material prices started to reduce, wages started to rise. Then people thought, okay, why we don't want, why we need 
ribs. Let's reduce labor because the or each rib is expensive. So get rid of ribs. Go for solid steps. They went for solid steps. And rib steps lost popularity. Rib steps lost popularity. So then came 1970s and 80s. 1970s so big trouble in 1973 October when OPEC countries, oil and petroleum exporting countries decided no oil to USA, no oil to UK. A lot of restrictions on other countries. And the oil prices increase rapidly. And this led to huge exploration on oil. And what happened? The economies developed a lot because restrictions forced other countries to explore oil. So one of the significant findings was North Sea oil. So with that, UK and Norway benefited a lot. These two countries, because the oil prices were high. And in UK, most of this wealth was uh, used for economy reforms in the economy. In Norway, they invested this money. Today, Norway is one of the richest. And what they did was they used they gave five-year visa to the people who to work in the North Sea, and after that, and within five years, they mastered all these technology of oil exploration. And today, Norwegians are managing their oil businesses. So, a lot of people from UK went to work in Norway, but they could work only five years because within five years, Norwegians ensured that they are masters of the game. So, then what happened was, so a lot of reforms, wages continued to rise, materials reduce. Then people thought, why do you want beans? Let's have columns and straps. So then flat flaps. And flat flaps, what is the problem? Flat flaps need a lot of steam. A lot of steam. So this was in 1980s, 2000. Then they thought, why reinforce conflict? Why not pre-stress conflict? Where we, which will allow us to minimize the amount of premiums. So, tendons like this. So, this pre-stressed. Now, this was a world trend. So, world trend in 1960s, 1980s, 2000 onwards, 
These are all different trends. Starting from ribbed, slab, to solid, to thicker flat slabs. And so, so that's the evolution that took place in the world. Now let's see how Sri Lanka responded. In Sri Lanka, our main exports were tea, rubber, coconuts in 1960s, 1970s. So, 1960s onwards. We do not have enough dollars. We don't have enough dollars. So we had to think of using less tea. That led to pre stress concrete. Concrete being actively promoted by Dr. A. N. S. Colossi. So we got PT bridges, bridge beams, and precast technology. So many things happened. So 1960s, we were well ahead of the rest of the world in technology. However, 1970 onwards, the closed economy. Many things were produced in Sri Lanka, but not enough. Not in sufficient quantities. So, our construction lagged. A lot. And Dr. Gulasinga served in served Malaysia because he found it difficult to work in Sri Lanka. So then came 1977 onwards, open economy. By 1990s, we started getting big companies like ICC, MAGA. They were small companies those days. Sunken. And uh, our engineers also got more experience. And we also followed The world trends. So, what we did was we also thought Praxabs versus solid slabs, solid beam slabs, beam. Slab systems. We also thought this may be better than this. Because that is the world trend. But not only this, we even went to PT slabs. However, by 2010 onwards, we started hearing construction cost in Sri Lanka is high. And it is uh, much higher than Malaysia.
but we continued because uh, we had a lot of uh, money coming as foreign remittance and uh, uh, so sometimes the money came through diaspora some you know so many different ways so what we did was we we kept on going and until april 2019 where the the blast struck the economy and then came covid then came the devaluation of rupee and as a result we had a construction industry down to a very low level and we had two few problems what are the problems two high cost per stamp and construction is prohibitively expensive so construction is not possible do not buy lands why because if you can't construct a building why why you want to buy lands so this has a rippling effect on all so that was the time we thought now we cannot go on like this now we have to make a change because we had a lot of research and we had a lot of ordinary materials but no takers nobody is interested in all these new materials that came out as research once in a while we get a client who is keen and then we might use it but it was never the uh, mainstream right. so if i give some examples of materials we had dura there is straw panels very good construction material but uh, only about 15 to 20 percent production capacity was used of the installed factory then we had cement stabilized earth used as blocks rammed earth many people tried to make the blocks popular but most of them failed only few are now remain then lightweight panels so there are so many options but very few were interested so that's the time we thought what is the way out what is the way out and the way out is let's see the fundamentals so if you have a problem first we have to understand the problem so we try to look at the fundamentals the reality of sri lanka is still if you spend 100000 rupees on materials we need only 35000 to 40000 rupees 
convert it to a building. And if you compare this with Australia and Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Australia, one day labor, 4,500 to 5,000 rupees. I'm talking about skill labor. In Australia, the minimum payment for skilled labor is 50 US dollars per hour. So the, the cost can be 500 to 400 to 500 dollars because you have to pay for insurance. So many other charges are there. Social security insurance, there are so many charges. So it can be 400 to 500 dollars, so rupees 100,000. But if you look at the cost of material, because we are using natural resources, there cannot be huge difference in the cost, cost of materials. Because we, all, we also import steel, so they also import. So the cost of materials cannot be very different. So what happened? So these people like flat minimum labor. And what should be our strategy? Minimum material. Like after the second world. So we thought, okay, let's see how this can be realized by taking, making use of the modern research we have already undertaken, we have completed. The data is available, the technology is available. So let's adopt the technology and see how we can have minimum material and how it can give rise to cost-effective construction. And then you'll ask why cost-effective? Because if you are to bring, in, bring the people back to the construction industry, we need to be cost-effective. So we have to see how we achieve it. So that's what I'm going to explain in the next few slides. Banduka, is that clear? Yes, sir. Very clear and very interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, right, thank you. So, we are, now we have to think not inside the box, so we need outside the box. We cannot be thinking inward, we should be thinking outward. So, that's what we need. So, let's see. What is the what is the concept behind this minimizing the material? Now let's take sand. I will take sand from Manampitiya. As an example, it may be applicable for manufactured sand as well. So this is Sri Lanka. It has to come all the way from there to here. Maybe 250 kilometers. So, diesel at 350. A loader lorry might do only about 3 kilometers per 3 kilometers per liter. Maximum is four. Because these are these are carrying huge loads, so maximum is maybe three. So that means two hundred rupees minimum per kilometer. 
So 50,000 rupees to bring only for the lorry charges, around 50,000. To bring a lorry from here, but you have to think about the lorry going back as well. So what they do is, now they have closed lorries, 10 wheelers. They bring material. So it's, it comes as sand in the closed lorry. And it goes back with a load of fertilizer. So to Colombo from Onambitia is a load of sand. From Colombo to so Manambitia Colombo it's a load of sand. And when it's going back from Colombo to Manambitia, it is carrying all the goods that are needed for farming. So because of that reason, still we can buy one cube of sand. For about rupees twenty two thousand. Now let's see what is the meaning of this. And the bulk density is thousand five hundred kilograms per meter cube. And one cube is 2.8 meter cubes. So the weight of one cube is 2.8 into 1500. Can, Bandhu, can you find the value? This is the bulk density. 4,200. 4,200 kilograms. So, then, what is the cost per one, one kilogram? This 22,000 divided by 4,000. What is the value of one dollar? Comes close to 5 rupees. Yeah, yes, uh, 5.23. Yeah, so rupees, let's say 5 rupees, right? Let's assume that it's around 5 rupees. Can be slightly more. Right. Now, let's look at the cost of cement. Cost of cement. Cement is rupees 2,200 per bag, 50 kilos. 2,200 divided by 50. Banduka, what's the price? 44. Yeah, so let's say rupees 45. Right. Because there can be some transport charges as well. So let's say 1 kilogram is uh, 45 rupees. Okay. Then, let's take concrete. 1 meter cube of concrete. We have cement around 300 kilograms. We have sand around 750 kilograms. We have water around 200 kilograms. Sorry, kilograms. These kilograms. So 500, 1250. So this will be 1,250 aggregates. Now, aggregate also cost will be 12,000 rupees divided by 4,000. It's also it also can be about 4,500 because the bulk density is slightly higher, about 1,600. So. What is the price? 12,000 divided by 4,500. So earlier we got 4,200 as the 
uh, weight of one cube. So we say what four thousand five hundred kilograms. Two point six seven. Two point six seven. Yeah. Say say shall we say two fifty? Yeah. Okay. Shall we say two fifty because sometimes you can get aggregates at a slightly lower price. So let's say yeah, it's around two fifty. Now we can work out the cost of concrete. Sand, aggregate, water. I have done this calculation earlier, day, but I never showed how I got these numbers. Five rupees for sand and all that. Can you remember, Dubu? Yes, yes. Sir. We calculated, but we I never told you that uh, how I got all these numbers. Now today, we multiply this by forty-five. Multiply this by five. Multiply this by two two fifty. And what are the values, Banduka? Thirteen thousand five hundred for cement. Five hundred, yeah. Three thousand seven hundred and fifty for sand. Three thousand one hundred and twenty-five for aggregates. Shall I say two three thousand two hundred? Okay. Then what is the addition? I'll make this three thousand eight hundred, right? Okay. okay. So thirteen thousand five hundred plus three thousand eight hundred plus three thousand two hundred. Twenty thousand five hundred. So this twenty thousand five hundred. Five. That is the cost of. Materials for one meter cube of one meter cube of concrete without labor, no labor, and then if you are making it a ready mix plant, then that involves transport, which can be about thousand to. Two thousand rupees, depending on the distance per meter cube. Right. So this is how we say one meter cube of concrete can cost around forty thousand to forty-five thousand. Sometimes it can be as high as fifty thousand when we go for higher strengths, but generally we say it's around forty to forty-five thousand. So can you understand how, why we how these figures come, Bandhuko? Yeah, it is clear. Yeah. Now, so if that is the case, we are paying for material. We are paying for the volume. And when we say we pay for the volume, we are actually paying for the weight. So if you are paying for the weight. How to reduce the cost? Reduce the cost. How to reduce the cost? Reduce the weight. Now, how to reduce the weight? Optimize. Now, how to optimize? Now we have to think about what the people did during after the Second World War, when material was expensive, labor was cheap. So this is what they did: ribbed construction with seventy-five millimeters of slab and. Something like two hundred millimeters of rib. They went for something like this. And then, this is a small span, so you need a minimum amount of steel. And it can come even as a eight millimeter bar. And you might need. Little bit of steel here, just to make sure the continuity. 
and that also can come with 8 mm. Why? Because these are thin concretes. So whatever we do, we can have a greater control because we are dealing with smaller quantities. So when we looked at this possibility, we thought in Sri Lanka, we must go one step further. Why? So what is the advantage of solid versus ribbed? So it may be 125 to 150, can go up to 175. Ripped, 75 to 90. And overall thickness is 100 millimeters. When you allow for rib thickness and everything, might not be even 100, but let's say 100. Then, we are saving, let's say, we save 50 millimeters each flow. Fifty multiplied by twenty-five kilonewtons per meter cubed. How much we save? Zero point zero five. How much we save? Uh, what is the what is the weight, uh, Bandhuka? Zero point zero five multiplied by twenty-five. One point two five. So each flow we save one point two five kilonewtons per meter square. From a conventional solution. And let's say we have a 40 story building. 40 multiplied by 1.25 is saved. How much you are saving? 50. 50? Yes. Kilo newtons per meter squared. Now, can you see that lightweight could have many advantages? Even in a multi story construction, a slab, minimum slab thickness can be extremely useful in multi story construction. But this may have a time factor because we see a lot of rainfall, a lot of work for foam work. So that's where we looked at again some of the research. Completed very successfully, leading to PhD at Maratu University. And that is the lightweight slab systems. And this is how the lightweight slab system comes. We have a precast beam, 175 millimeters thick. 200 millimeters deep for up to 4.5 meters pass. Then we place these beams at 2 meter intervals. So these are variation from the original designs where they use 1.5 meter original research. Then what we did was we looked at it, how we can improve it according to Europos. So this can be 45 to 55 millimeters. And we are having these slabs. Then we wanted continuity. So let's see. Okay. Let's have a rib like this. Have the reinforcement here. And then place a screen. Then you might say, oh, this might this can be dismantled. How to prevent it dismantling? We, we run a reinforcement here and 
and uh, locking reinforcement here. We lock each slab by using a 8 millimeter cut piece, small piece of steel. And we like continuity. So what we do is we provide some top reinforcement here, some top reinforcement here. Then what do you have? Uh, we have a precast system with a precast slab with insitropic. And what is the beauty of the system? Because we have ribs, what is the deflection? is almost equal to zero because during the construction we can have props for this props for this and a prop for this because also place a prop in the middle then we Complete the slab. And then we remove the props after concrete has hardened. So these days, you know, the, the strain development curves are very rapid. So if we keep this moist and cured with ponding for one week, concrete will gain a huge strength. So after one week, we can remove. And we can precast all these members. Precast. We don't have to worry why, why the columns and all the other things are cast, foundations are done. At a casting yard created on the side of the same site, if the space allowed, then we can start casting this. And the, the main innovation that we did. So now I'm going to draw an exaggerated, you know, a bigger enlarged view. So this slab. So this slab. We have this slab. And because we are placing only 35 to 45 millimeters. Only a small quantity of concrete. We can use admixtures, improve the workability. Because uh, one liter of admixture can cost about 600 rupees, 400 to 600 rupees per liter. So by using admixtures, we can reduce the water content. And we can get high quality concrete like 30 to 40 megapascal concrete. For the screen. And even these can be about 30 to 40 megapascal concrete. Because higher the strength, lesser the cover required. Because we are going for thin construction. So if you are going for thin construction, we know in concrete, cement is the friend, what is the enemy? So reduce the enemy by using admixtures. So that with the same amount of cement, you can get high strength, like 30 to 40 megapascal. And once you go for something like 40 megapascal concrete or 45 megapascal concrete, the ingredients are the same, but the durability is very high. We can reduce the cover requirements. Anyway, these slabs are cast like this with a lock. And you need cover blocks. Reinforcement. Like the other reinforcement. These are all 8 millimeter bars.
Y8, we get 420 bars or 420 into 6, about 2,500 meters of steel reinforced when we buy 8 millimeters. So you can see per ton, we get a length of about 2,500, so we can minimize the steel. And these 8 millimeter bars at 150. 75 here. 75 here. Will be adequate. On the other hand, we can cast it to 450 millimeter thickness if a tower crane is available for lifting. If the tower crane is available for lifting, we can cast it for 450. With uh, 150, with the reinforcement at 150 centimeters. Then you need three bars like this. So this 150, 75, 75. So altogether 450. So there are two thick, two widths that you can cast. But if you are if you are not having a tower crane, the weight of a panel should be less than 100 kilograms. Then two people can handle it. Otherwise, we need four people to handle it. So those are the issues that the construction manager should resolve depending on the type of equipment available at the site. So, we complete this for 90 millimeters, 90 to 100 millimeters. We try our best to reach 90. Then what we can do is, we can get marble, marbles, chips, and the terrazzo chips. Or four to six millimeter chips. What we do is these all, you know, a lot of drought will be here. We embed these materials and let it harden. And by using a float, you can make all these materials firmly embedded. And then we can, once hardened, we can cut and polish with a terrazzo machine. And you can get whatever the finish you like. And another technique is get broken windscreens. And what do you do? You lay broken windscreens, you crush it and embed broken windscreens also, pieces also in between. And so you can get extremely nicely finished terrazzo finish with without spending money on. Flow finishes. That's one alternative. So what is the other alternative? Other alternative is we have the same thing. Now I'm not going to draw all the layers. Let's assume that it is all completed. And we have completed this perfectly level. These 90 millimeters, these two meters. Then what we do is we mix one tile grout with one fine sand. Now, generally, 
the tau tri route is laid for about 8 to 10 millimeter thickness. Here we lay this mix for a 15 millimeter thickness. And lay the tile directly on it. Lay the tile directly on it. Giving a total thickness of around 125 millimeters. Now let's compare this with what we generally do. 150 strap because we are concerned about the sound insulation. Then we have around 40 millimeter tile bed. Then we will use around at least 5 millimeter drought and tiles. So what is the overall thickness? Maybe about 200. 150, 200, around 200. About 200 to 210. And we save 75 millimeters. And we can use an average density of 25. So that is 0 0.075 into 25. How much is that, Banuka? Banuka? It's 1.25. 1.25 kilonewtons per meter squared is saved. Per square meter. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So what you do is, now we have lightweight. So because this lightweight, So let's take a house, uh, possibility for a house, just to give, a, give you an indication how this can be used in apartment buildings, having seven, eight stories. So just look at a house, having a garage like this, and the entrance here. A bedroom here, a washroom here, and these are all the living area and the staircase here. And so these are, so here you can get door. This may be the entrance. So this is the bedroom. And so this may be about 6 meters. This may be another 6 meters. It's a large house. So what can we do? Now some may be there may be walls. This may be a wall. So this is a lightweight system. And let's say this is 8 meters. So every 2 meters we have a beam. Then we will place the straps. So what happens? This is lightweight. So part of the load is transferred there, part of the load is transferred here. And loads are transferred at intervals. And now you can see 
if you use a strong masonry masonry can carry carry a part of the load load concrete frame will carry the rest so that means because this system is made by us with precast elements we can for example the, for this bedroom we can decide we are going to have the beam this way because this is a wall this is a wall the windows are here so we might say okay so i'm going to have the slabs this way so this can this wall will carry the weight of the beam because part of this slab will go into this wall and part of this slab will go into this wall so what you see is very good two way distribution of loads that is the case you can decide we run the main frame elements only in one direction and we carry all the other elements this way we are going to have the slabs this way and we are not going to have run our frame this way because the, these walls can be load bearing walls this can be load bearing walls so the moment you start thinking like this you'll find we have a very good load distribution so it's lightweight and it's hybrid why hybrid because loads are going all over the directions and we are carrying part of the loads using mason and it can be used for multi story and apartment buildings and what is the beauty of this system because the deflections are strictly controlled we reduce the number of operations like what first thing no tile bed use high quality bricks high quality cement blocks although we say call them cement blocks they are concrete blocks why because the manufacturers the reputed manufacturers use chips manufactured sand they use chips manufactured sand and high quality cement so it's a concrete block and very low water cement ratio so they are concrete blocks that can easily reach 5 to 8 megapascal compressive strength and the euro code six tells us with m4 motor of 4 megapascal when you know the block strength one is m4 motor is one is 5 motor 
5 to 8 megapascal compressive strength. What happens? We get 2.52, 3.5 megapascal wall strength. Or you can even go for something like 4. Depending on the strength of the blocks. And to minimize the weight of the blocks, we don't have to go for solid blocks, we can go for hollow blocks. We can make use of hollow blocks. So, what is the concept? Concept is we have less weight in slabs, less weight in walls. Instead of 225 walls, we are using 150 walls. And these blocks are high quality. So if you construct the walls carefully, with due attention, you can make a perfect wall that does not need plaster. And uh, there's a product called Maco Super Plaster, which is a very uh, water resistant product, polymer based. So you can have three millimeter, uh, two millimeter. Thin plaster. And then the door and windows could be out of aluminium or timber. But how you fix it is all the aluminium work is fixed with anchor balls. So even timber frames can be fitted with anchor balls. Because earlier, you know, early days we made the frames like this. So there was a portion here to fix the, but these days we don't use it. We, we make the timber frames also like aluminium frames. So that we can, by using uh, anchor balls, we can fix the fix the system. So all those things are available in Sri Lanka. So the whole idea is reduce materials operations. In doing so, reduce cost. And you might ask, what is the cost? You can have hit 2,500 rupees, 25,000 rupees per square meter for the structure, and you can complete a structure for 50,000 rupees per square meter. So, what do you think, Manduka? The concept? It's very interesting, sir, and I think uh, we should. Take this to the construction industry. Yes, because if we take this to the construction industry, there will be plenty of people who are willing to construct again. And the, the beauty of this system is this can be used in tall buildings, medium rise buildings, houses, rooftops, you name it. So if you are doing a rooftop, why the rooftops leak? We do solid slabs. They sag. And then water stagnates. And with time, due to creep deformations, these sags. And we have problems. But here, we have a slab which does not deflect. Lightweight. And very deep. 
So this can be altogether 300 millimeters deep. What you can do is you can lay the street to a slope. Maybe the street here may be 60. The street here may be 40. So you lay it to a slope and you use all these marble type materials and uh, make the top surface rough. The moment you do this, you will find waterproofing is not essential. Is not essential. So there are so many things you can do. Because the whole idea of uh, embedding chips here is rather than having a cement based surface, what is exposed to the rain will be a chip based surface. And we know chip based surfaces are much harder and erosion resistant than concrete based or cement based surfaces. So the whole idea is we spray, spread pre-prepared mix of pebbles, marble, marble pieces, terrazzo chips, you name it. It can be glass chips, anything. That is hard materials. And then use a float and firmly embed those things into the concrete, fresh concrete. And why we can do all these things is we are not in a hurry because we are dealing with small quantities of concrete. Whereas, you know, when you are doing a slab, it's a massive operation. Everybody is in a hurry. But here we are talking about small operations where nobody is in a hurry. So we have plenty of time. So this is some technology that I learned in 1985. 86, working with Toda construction of Japanese, Japan. Toda was a big company. They have operated a lot in uh, Singapore. And uh, they did Labu Makaltua rehabilitation project. And they never had extra operations because Japanese labor was very expensive. Their method was lean construction. So, it's lean construction. So, the future is lean construction. And this has been completely developed at Moroto University. So, I developed it fully by using all the research. I, I use the research done by various other people, published work, and developed this method fully. So, today, uh, we have actual examples where this method, these methods have been used for very cost-effective construction. And so we call it lightweight, hybrid, multi-story construction. And this can go up to, easily go up to four-story houses, eight-story apartments. And with little improvement, my gut feeling is we can go up to 12 floors. So just imagine 12 floor apartment as much lighter than a conventional one, needing much less material, having hybrid load carrying systems with minimum plaster and the floors as terrazzo floors or tiles on terrazzo type floors. You can achieve very significant cost savings. And this is our future. So, so there's a question. I mean, the I mean, that's there not the, the, yeah. There's a question. The question? Yeah. yeah. Is Can it possible to is it possible to provide provisions for services for Yeah, actually, like uh, there are two options. One is you know because we are having street. Because we are having these panels like this. Two panels will be like this. So you can run the conduit here. Right? Because the screen is going to come here. Got it, Bandhu? Yes, got it. But uh, the other option is, uh, you know, 
because we are saving so much money. You can have, you know, by embedding timber pieces here in the beams, or by keeping con uh, the conduits here, we can have a suspended ceiling from these beams easily using Eltero board. Eltero boards, you know, these uh, cement fiber boards that are manufactured in Sri Lanka. So we can easily create a seating underneath. And all the services can go in any direction. Because we are saving so much money in the system. We can afford to have a ceiling or otherwise we can easily provide services using conduits uh, within the because we we can we can we can alter the arrangement so one one arrangement that was developed earlier was this these slabs need, need not be unique uh, they can be any arrangement like this so those days you we used to run services here then we thought okay that's the little bit of extra work so let's cast the panels like this So we can provide the services here. Likewise, providing services is not a problem at all. So that's the first question. Yes. Uh, one second one. Uh, so uh, what is the power criteria when provided minimum thickness? Is it possible oh, yes, to apply right. for... Power, power goes with uh, Europe. Or oh, adverse weather conditions like that. No power, you know, that's why I told you uh, just one moment. See, this is the durability. And these are the exposure and these, so we go for XC3. XC3. And here we have XC3. XC3, members with slab geometry. Position of reinforcer not affected by construction process. It says reduce the class by one. Reduce the class by one. And then it says if you are going for C3545 concrete, reduce the class by one. So you can reduce the class by two. So instead of S4, you can try S2. What is the what is the core requirement? 15 minutes. Got it? Yeah, got it. So that's what that's why we use admixtures and go for because the, the 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 main advantage is because we are using very low liquid con concrete, we don't have to bring ready mix. We can use side mix where we use the admixture, minimize the water content, use the vibrator, compact the concrete as much as possible, and Minimize minimize the water because we don't want uh, much workability because we can use a vibrate and uh, vibrate the concrete in the panel. So so anything above fifteen millimeters is ac accepted because you don't need this delta. You know when you when you look at the cover, there's a delta factor, the 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 ten millimeter because we are we are casting we are not uh, walking on the reinforcement. We are casting on the ground. We are not walking on the reinforcement. So this tolerance is not necessary. Tolerance is not necessary. So we need what we need is 15 millimeters. See? What we need is 15 millimeter cover because we are using very high strength concrete. Where the cover to, cover to the reinforcement can be assured because we are not work, working on it. We can buy cover blocks because cover blocks are really available in the market these days. So we can provide 15 millimeter. Or may, if you want, you can go for 20 millimeter. Okay, Manduga. Okay, sir. And, uh, so how we long? have designed it for Eurocode. We have designed it for Eurocode. So there's no 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 problem of designing it for Eurocode. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. What and uh, uh, how long must the prop be provided until the concrete reaches uh, its strength? Yeah. So basically, I mean, uh, these days we know when you go for uh, high strength uh, concrete. 
this high strength is uh, need we are going for high strength uh, not for the flexural strength we are going for high strength for durability so if you are even if you design this as a 25 megapascal cube strength that is enough because this this slab is we are not going to load the slab immediately after removing the props you want few people walking and attending to the work right if you as as long as you are not going to store material on the slab the moment uh, the the street concrete cubes reach uh, 25 megapascal you can remove the props but uh, we are we are we are doing it in the range of uh, 35 45 megapascal concrete because we have minimized the water cement ratio so what happens we can easily remove the props after one week of ponding one or one week of ponding that is my personal experience okay so basically now this is a departure from our general thinking okay we maximum we can do is 30 megapascal concrete all that is gone now now we are thinking about 45 50 megapascal concrete with that mixture even in small sites because uh, spending little money for admixion uh, reducing the cover going for a minimum thickness they are all advantages so our task is minimize 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 the processes minimize the materials and if it it, it means little extra no but doesn't matter because lab is very cheap what you have to save is materials okay well oh, okay sir and there's an question i think we discuss this uh, uh, any provisions considerations when it's directly exposed sun or thermal heat effects using no, as actually, actually this is what we do this what we this is a good question it's a very good question this is what we do now in a normal slab we have beam and uh, you might have a wall all that so what we do is in this particular one so we have uh, this arrangement but when we have a roof what we do is we make this beam little larger and there's a bitumen sheet here. you know blackish color bitumen sheets that we use as a roofing material and then we place the slabs on that then we place the concrete now there's a positive connection between slabs and the beams so so the situation is like this we have this there's a separation and we have the slabs made continuous with so this can have expansion is it and we can create a slope so as long as there's a slope we don't have to worry because water will go out as long as we are removing the water no problem but the beauty of this system is deflection is zero so there's no sagging in the slab because most of the time you will find the uh, due to creep shrinkage slab sag and this sag cause water to stagnate and when the water stagnates then all the problems will come and waterproofing problems will be there due to that reason so what we can do is we can embed chips 
so that chips will not wear out though the concrete can, cement can be washed away but not the chips so we, we create chips here. and then use rooftop for planting fruits and vegetables to keep pots like this plant and so they'll be shaped right so these can be specially made so they do not touch the slab so what happens when you do all these things or you can put a polythene here do something what happens when you do all these things the rooftop is readily used and it will have, or you might have solar panels covering the rooftop. You'll do something. And you might have an off grid system, off grid DC system, direct current system, because you don't have to convert it to AC. And use a small inverters, DC to AC inverter. Say you want to use an electric kettle, use a small DC to AC inverter and use the kettle. Because this is the decentralized system, which is much cheaper than centralized solar systems of grid. So what you do is you will have two wirings in the house, one wiring for C B, another wiring for this DC system. And uh, you will have a separate uh, bulk system for the DC system. So whenever you have a solar. You can have your own solar system. You don't have to be connected, you know, you don't have to connect the solar system with the grid, grid system. You can have a, you can have two systems. And you can save a lot of money, use for lighting, boiling water, and so on. And uh, even if you have an electric uh, car, you can charge batteries. You can do all those things with DC. You don't have to go for AC, ordinary current. So there are so many different options when you have a rooftop. And rooftops uh, will be ideal because we can uh, we can have uh, many users with the roof. Okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. Last question. What I, say is, what I say is we cannot be thinking inside the box anymore. We yes. cannot be concerned about convention. We must start thinking completely fresh, new. And that's why, you know, we like all of you coming for this exhibition because all, more, many of these things will be showcased at the exhibition. So we like all of you coming, learning firsthand because it will not be just exhibits. We'll, we'll ask you to, you know, tap a ramble wall or you might ask you to drive some stools and see how the Dura panels can be corrected. So there will be many, many things, live exhibition. So if you have time, please come and learn firsthand. And it is, uh, you know, so we are spending over one million to make this happen. So we like all of you coming and, uh, uh, you know, learning the state of the art in uh, lightweight hybrid construction and so many new materials that are available for us to be very innovative and make this, uh, make our construction industry viable again. Okay, Mandu. Okay, sir. Sir, the exhibition is on uh, 22nd to 20th. 22nd, 23rd, 24th. I think it's uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. This month. Very okay. close. I mean, uh, not not tomorrow. Not tomorrow, the following uh, Thursday, we are having the exhibition. Okay. And right. there are two more questions. And, uh, what is that? Uh, is there any effect of the core joint between two stages of concrete and how to overcome it? Oh, no, 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 no. We, what we do is when you're casting, uh, that's a good question, excellent question. When you're casting the steps, uh, so we need to lift it. So what you do is, when the slab is cast, it 
it will have a hook like this for lifting okay so when you are car, when you are, so we run a reinforcement and uh, lock the lock this so this is used for lifting but after lifting uh, placing we put a reinforcement through all these hooks and uh, connect all the cells got it mm, yes sir so we run around 400 mm of iron mm centers we run some uh, red for 8 mm bars in uh, both directions and correct everything so this this slab is a mechanically locked slab although it's a precast we are not relying on the bond bond will be there we can we can we can generate the bond bond but we are not relying on the bond we are relying on all the mechanical conditions got it oh you did and uh, the last question uh, could you sir could you describe further uh, the ex explain precast slab plus speed method and monolithic construction requirements oh no no actually uh, this slab has been developed experimentally and uh, oh, there has been cast tested and then designed this can be designed as well because these are all mechanically connected. You can, uh, when you are designing, this is how you use the design. Now let's say, now we have uh, the slab, the B. Then we have the slab. So this bearing can be uh, this 175. So we keep about 75 here. This 50 bearing. Bearing is 50. Then we have uh, this next object. So we consider all this as a flange piece. So what we designed for Eurocode is a flange wheel. What is the reason? The reason is we are having links like this, other reinforcement and locks. So this this will be a composite action. Not due to bond, but due to locking. Okay. So we designed this flange. For the this beam. We design uh, this to carry the construction. Once you do that, you know, you have hooks and all those connections and all that. So it is all one unit now. So what we do is we design a 90 millimeter slab to span two meters. According to Europe. That's all. And we make it continuous also. Now to make this load carrying capacity is more, we put some reinforcement here. Eight millimeter bars, very little reinforcement, and make it continuous. So these slabs are now going to behave like continuous slabs. This slab, 90 millimeters. Beam is going to behave as a flange. So, this one unit, one system that can be designed for you. Have I answered the question? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yes, correct, right. sir. It is clear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay Anything else? Um, two more questions. May I put them in the group, sir? No, 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 no. I mean, we are not. It's okay, you can ask. Um, what about the vibrations due to less thickness? Uh, oh, no, no, the slabs uh, over 90 millimeter slab over two meters is more than enough. And you know, slabs can vibrate, but beams will not vibrate. So, this is a beam system. So, I have used it over six meters, six meter beams, zero vibration, no vibration. Okay. Vibration can be suppressed. You can design for vibration when you are designing because vibration depends on the reflection. 
Uh, there are research papers. You can download these research papers by uh, C J Singh. On ISL, you can readily download. C J Singh uh, on native SAP systems will allow you to download it. ISL papers. There the vibration is handled. So you can just see. Vibration is based on deflection. If the deflection is zero, vibration is zero. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. And so, so is there any significant cost saving um, compared to read bus and the normal beams? There's one question like that. Yes. Actually, uh, you can do this, uh, complete this slab for about uh, 800 rupees per, 8,000 rupees per square meter, whereas the conventional can go up to 1,000. 400 fire because you know this is very very cheap when the spans are large and uh, anyway this is a this is a very cost effective system because you don't have to spend for uh, shuttering the reinforcement is less because you know reinforcement is very expensive so whatever reinforcement you save is a huge save so that's why i said you know if you use this method you can complete the structure for 2500 rupees per square you 25,000 rupees per square meter or 2,500 rupees per square foot. If you ask anybody, everybody will say, oh, sir, to complete the structure, the minimum is 8,000 rupees these days. Okay. This is a huge saving. Every corner we are saving and the unbelievable, unbelievable saving. Okay, okay Mandu. Okay, sir. And I think... Uh... Chairman said in the section committee, engineer Mangasila was there, but things are disconnected. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, today's lecture uh, was uh, very interesting, and uh, there are many positive feedbacks in the chat box as well about yeah, this yeah, uh, method. And, um, yeah. So, hopefully, we will be able to take this to construction industry. In, Future. Yeah, so 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 it's up to the engineers to take it. So uh, that's why we are using all these exhibitions. We are doing everything possible to make the professionals understand that uh, conventional systems uh, we have not taken it properly because we have copied too much, and in copying we have adopted inappropriate systems that are good for countries with high labor costs. Yes. Because in our system, the material cost must be is very high. So it, what you have to say is material, not the labor. So by going for high, no, more materials, less labor, we have made our construction industry extremely ex expensive. So we have to go back. And I can give you one example. In 2015, I had to give 50,000 square feet in two months for a hospital project and I designed a building with uh, concrete floors but these concrete floors are on steel beams composite systems and these uh, beams these slabs so I use uh, precast slabs pre-stressed concrete do you know what is the thickness of the slab for 90 meet, nine, 6 meter span? 90 millimeter. And even today you can go there, no vibrations, absolutely no vibrations in the structure systems. And uh, so they are using it as the hospital. Absolutely no problem in the system. And cost-wise, those days, 2015, the cost per square foot was 7,000 rupees. And I completed it for 3,500 rupees. So my systems always, my task is, uh, my target is minimum 50% cost saving from the conventional systems. So the system that I present, presented, the systems, or if you put everything together, as a lightweight hybrid multi-story construction, the construction saving can be anything between 50 to 60%. Okay, Bandhavan? 
Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was really interesting today. And uh, how about our next session? Uh, it will be in the continuation of this. So. Uh, next session, I think uh, now we have uh, got this uh, in. Yeah. Uh, we can go back to columns, uh, foundations, okay. masonry design. So this will need masonry design also. Again, uh, no. So first we'll complete what we started before we okay. go to more masonry design. So we'll uh, discuss columns, foundations, cellular rough foundations. So there are so many things we can talk. Again, okay. associated with this lightweight hybrid construction. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for this. Okay. Sir. Nice. Thank you. And uh, Thank you, we will share that uh, exhibition file also if available in the group. Uh, it's it's a, it's an architect 2024. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So if you ask, uh, if you just uh, go into Facebook or Arc Institute of we Architecture, you can okay, find sir. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sir. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So our, our one is uh, only 30 by 30, 30 feet by 35 feet area full of things that you never expected, uh, full of okay. surprises, okay. right? Okay. And uh, new technology, new methods, uh, you know, a lot of live, live uh, exhibition, not like a dead exhibition where you see something has already been made for you. It's not like that. You will come and do things there. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you okay. very much, sir. Right. And also, uh, I would like to thank the chairman of the intersection committee. He was there until the end, and now he, was, right. he, he left for some events for reason. And uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Mangala Silva, the chairman of the intersection committee, for continuing this lecture series. And also the ISL secretariat, publicity department, and the IT team for these hosting arrangements. And also, uh, I'd like to really appreciate the participants and uh, will ask me questions and uh, for their enthusiasm and great interest in the subject. It is really valuable for this lecture series and we hope you will join our future sessions as well. Thank you very much and uh, good night. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.